hey guys uh, welcome back uh, today we'll see uh, one type of problem uh, which is of relevance for this class uh, involving the continuity equation and Navier-Stokes equation and how to solve it I'll solve one problem and you'll see that your homework also contains a number of uh, problems involving the same style so let's get started okay so this is the uh, continuity plus and three Navier's three components of the Navier-Stokes equation which we saw in the previous video uh, and the problem which is of um, relevance for this particular class is the first type I will not be teaching boundary conditions because of lack of time and also the fact that uh, you will be taught all this uh, uh, for replication of Navier-Stokes and the appropriate boundary condition and how to derive uh, different approximations uh, in future classes uh, in advanced uh, uh, transport phenomena uh, and also those of you who are going to graduate school you will be of course seeing more of this okay so we get started um, the first type of problem is we have a steady two-dimensional incompressible velocity field given in the x and y component of it is given the velocity field now we have to find out the pressure as a function of x and y okay so in this particular problem the assumption is what are the assumptions the assumptions are that it is steady incompressible um, 2d flow and gravity not acting in x and y direction okay so there are four steps to this type of problem so what is the first step step one check continuity so you of course check if del dot v is equal to zero or not So there is no z component this is of, of course equal to zero and du over dx this case is a dv over dy is equal to a which is a which is equal to zero so yes if not satisfied if this continuity is not continuity uh, condition is not satisfied stop you cannot proceed okay so these steps are very important uh, it's pretty much like a, a speed breaker you, you 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 have to see if these are satisfied uh, particularly the first step and also the third step as you will see okay now that the continuity equation is satisfied let's go to step two which is the Navier-Stokes equation uh, you simplify it okay so what is the x direction rho rate of change of velocity in the x component with respect to time which is pretty much goes off because it is steady state u u over dx no z component which is this is equal to rate of change of pressure with respect to time plus rho 
gravity in the direction goes to zero as you assume that there is no gravitational force in the x and y component plus viscosity mu d square u over dx square plus d square u over dy square square u over dz square which is essentially del square v okay so this component goes to zero there's no z component and so the final so sim for the simplifying what you get a x plus b times a plus minus a y plus c x times zero so du over dy equal to zero and this is equal to Yes, the change of pressure plus mu d squared u over dx squared is equal to zero plus same thing with respect to u square. Okay, which further simplifies to minus dp over dx plus rho a square x plus a b gives dp over dx is equal to rho minus a square x minus a b okay so we got the differential form of pressure in one of the components which is the x component next we will do the similar thing for y component for y for y direction okay so y direction because of lack of space i'm using a separate space let's and we'll plug it in back into the sheet worksheet so y direction you have rho the change of velocity the y component with respect to time which is equal to zero plus mu plus dx v dv dy goes to zero which is equal to minus rate of change of pressure with respect to time rho g gravitational force in the y, y axis which is equal to zero plus the viscosity term which is d square v You simplify it you get so this is the two this is a complete set of navier stokes equation in the y x y component of it so for the simplifying it you get rho ax plus b after taking the partial derivatives times c plus cx K, which gives rise to rate of change of pressure with, res you know, with respect to uh, change in y, uh, y direction, the y axis, rho cs plus a square y minus acx. So this cancels out. And finally, you are left with sorry. So 
rho minus bc minus a square y. Okay, so this is the y component. This is the differential form of the pressure in the y component. So plugging that back in into our spreadsheet. Step two, rate of change of pressure in the Y component A is equal to rho plus B C plus A square Y. Okay, so now we have pressure, the differential equations in the X and the Y component of them. Um, and what we are asked to find the pressure field as a function of x and y uh, the pressure field must satisfy both these equations So, to satisfy both these equations. So, we have seen the first two steps now. Let's move on to the third step. Step 3. Step 3 is a critical step. It's, as I said in the class, um, for realistic solution under the assumption of steady flow the pressure field P must be a smooth function P must be a smooth function which implies what does a smooth function imply that order of differentiation it should not it should not matter that is a very critical step as a matter of fact um, some trick questions could look very complicated but it could just be killed in this step so how do we check this uh, to check this, what do we do? We take the equations, the differential equations of pressure in X and Y uh, component and we check for the double differentiation and cross differentiation as well. So d squared P over dx dy, if this order of differentiation does not matter, you check So this in this case is equal to 0. Now you also check if d square p dy dx which is d over dy. The first equation is it equal to 0 in this case yes. So clearly the pressure field satisfies uh, you know it's a smooth function p and we can move ahead if condition not satisfied stop okay what is a step four then step four is we integrate after checking the smooth functionality, integrate the x and the y components of the differential equation this, sorry, let me say square x 
so a b and what do you get p is a function of x y is equal to rho minus a square by 2 square minus a b x plus g y which is pretty much the constant but it's a function of And for dp over dy, we differentiate and we equate. So p over dy is equal to rho zero plus. The first derivative of gy which is this that is equal to rho minus bc minus a square y this gives g dash the first derivative of g is rho times minus bc minus a square y or when you integrate it, gy becomes rho times bcy because you're integrating with respect to y going from the first derivative to g of y minus a square square 2 plus c1 which is a constant. Okay, so all together you have pressure as a function of x and y equal to rho times minus a square x square minus a b x minus b c y minus a square y square over 2 plus c1 this is the pressure it's a function of x and y so really you see that the way to go in step four is you integrate one of the components to get a function in the other uh, so if you're integrating over x you get a function uh, as a residue which is g of y which then you again differentiate and equate to calculate g of y Finally, you get a constant C1, which gets plugged in to your final P, the pressure as a function of X and Y equation. So, these are the four steps to follow. And this is pretty much what you will be asked out of this chapter, uh, specifically pertaining to Navier-Stokes equation. In your homework, you will find a similar types of problems. So, please solve them. And if you get stuck at any point, you can contact me or the AI and would be happy to help. Thank you.